what exactly is gold right? Part zero. Hello everyone, this is Jay from PCS and I'd like to talk about something that has been happening a lot and that is people saying that pulsating circle slime isn't gold right? Which has made me confused for a moment, but after giving it a little thought, I realized it's because gold right is a genre that's been around for almost four years and a lot has happened since its first inception. Not only has the genre evolved into multiple subgenres and niches, the way we discover music through algorithm and playlist has blurred the lines to the point that most people don't know what the style originally sounded like. Gold right is a style I'm quite passionate about, but it's very misunderstood. So over the next few days, I'm going to release a bunch of videos about what exactly is going on. I'm going to talk about history, influences, musical characteristics, and maybe some music theory. For those of you who don't like this short format, I will also release the full thing on YouTube when I'm done with it. So let's talk a little about Goldrine, follow us, and see you soon for part 1. What exactly is Goldrine? Part 1, the origins of Grindcore. Before we talk about Goldrine, we need some context, so let's talk about Grindcore. There's a lot to say about it, so this is not going to be exhausted, I will just go over the basics. In essence, Grindcore is a crossover of what was extreme metal and hardcore, but in the mid 80s, it's a fusion of the speed and aggression of hardcore metal bands like the Star and TRI, with a sound riffing and somewhat even extreme metal band like Celtic Frost and Blaster. The resulting sound is something faster and more condensed than these influences, and constitute what we can call proto Grindcore. So, not exactly grindcore yet, but almost there. A lot of bands could be considered proto grindcore, it's an endless topic, honestly, but the most important ones are Siege and Impulsion from the USA, Lair from the Netherlands, SOB from Japan, and Pataredi from Croatia, then Yugoslavia. All of these bands basically set the stage for what would become grindcore and eventually gold mine in later years. When a key band would codify everything, make it coherent, and have a big enough reach to make it into an actual style. And yes, of course, I'm talking about Nathan Bell, but we'll talk about this in the next video, so follow us and see you soon for part 2. What exactly is Gold Grind? Part 2 Grindcore and Back to Gold Grind. We talked about Proto Grindcore in the previous video, so now it's time to talk about actual Grindcore. And it's going to be an easy one because while it does involve a lot of bands, everything can be summed up by looking at Napalm Death. When it comes to Grindcore itself, Napalm Death is the most important band because they were the ones who called the name after a German was described as Swans. They're the ones who coined the term last beat, and they were one of the first to systematically write songs around that drum pattern rather than it being just a consequence of their speed. Mostly, they brought in the influence of the industrial music that helped shape the of Proto Grindcore into something more coherent, a single massive sound. The first album, Scum, is the most obvious example, with the first half being exactly that Proto Grindcore, basically Celtic Cross Rips over siege like drumming, and the second half being more condensed, more compressed, more coherent than just a mashup of influences. Their second album, from Enslavement to Obliteration, is basically the first fully realized Grindcore album, which has that defining, dense, compressed, minimalistic, and almost monolithic wall of sound that really defines Grindcore. More than the blast beat, more than the speed of the influences, this is what defines Grindcore, that monolithic thick wall of sound. This is something that remains over all of the white subjects. There are a lot of bands that didn't mention here, but I would need to keep this short because this is about gold wine, not quite core. We're gonna see that in the next video. Thank you, follow us, and see you soon for part 3. What exactly is Goldrine? Part 3, the birth of Goldrine. The birth of Goldrine is actually pretty easy to be found. It's Carcass! They came up with the whole thing. Carcass is one of the earliest grindcore bands and is very much a band from that era. Built up with the same influences by members who were active day traders. Carcass sounded quite different from the other early grindcore bands because they were a lot more influenced by Jeff Metal, which was still pretty new by 1987. Compared to other grindcore bands, Carcass has the deeper, more organic sound with talking guitars and even deeper, more flowy vocals that sometimes use bit shifters and harmonizers to make them even deeper. And they were also using a lot of musical tropes from death metal, such as double pick drums and treadmill picking, and a less minimalistic sense of the world. Less minimalistic, still minimalistic. The whole thing made for a very passy low sound, but thank you. Feel the music in your body on top of it. And combined with the gold yard work, the idea was to evoke flesh and to disgust you from it. Carcass were mixed and vegan at the time, and they were trying to put you off eating flesh by playing music that would make you physically uncomfortable. This is the specific thing that sets Goldwine apart from Blind Core, and that all the following bands will try to replicate. That organic, passive, physically uncomfortable sound. Concept that you can find in all the Goldwine subgenres and verbs to To sum up, Goldwine is a style that uses the speed, aggression, and intensity of Blind Core, with some writing and sound jobs from Death Metal to evoke a feel of fleshy, body discomfort. We will dive a little more into this in the next part of the video. Thanks for watching and follow us for the next part. What exactly is Goldrine? Part 4! The first wave of Goldrine, also known as Old School Goldrine. We are now in the early 90s and the underground is busting. The success of Napalm Death and Carcass, as well as the rise of death metal, is leading to a lot of experimentation and crossovers with new genre. And this is where Goldrine is really taking shape. To sum up, most of the bands of that era were trying to emulate that body disgust feel of Carcass by using some of the same style tropes such as dark tune guitars, fixed sound and no rolls, and more death metal influence than Considering how much progress extreme music was making in that era, 
event that this man's had an enormous pool of influences to build a new sound up. In the new grindcore, Death Metal knows everything really, but with that body in this feel as the core of their sound. Some bands would take Nate on their style grindcore and make it sound gory, like Roger Date or Squash Bowls. Some would have a nosier, more free from tank, like Blood or Impedigo. Some would get more influence from Death Metal, like Exalteration and Earth Death Infection. And some would be very unfrog with the broadcast influences, like General Surgery or Necron. One of the most important and defining moments of Gold Grind will be the release of Dead Infection's second album, A Chapter of Accidents. An album that basically got rid of most of the Death Metal influence and built up a sound much closer to the original grindcore using a lot more TV and a new type of move that will become central to the style. There's a lot more to explore in that era and a lot to say about bands like Betty Boo or Cessna. If we now have Gold Grind assumptions to explore, see your next part and follow us. What exactly is Goldwine? Part 5 Pathological Goldwine. Let's take a dive into the different subgenres of Goldwine now. As we've already established, Goldwine as a genre tries to replicate that disgusting, physically uncomfortable fear that was first pioneered by Carcass. And Pathological Goldwine is a subgenre that is trying to get you there by evoking the medical world. Pathological Goldwine usually uses images of real life surgeries and accidents, as well as actual medical terms for song titles, band names, and the general aesthetic. Musically speaking, if I really had to sum up, I would describe Pathological Goldwine as trying to fit the sound of later Carcass to the music of early Carcass, so that cool clinical hospital feel but applied to something that is closer to grindcore rather than the intricate death metal that Carcass was playing after their album release. Of course, it's more complicated than that, but in a sense, it's pretty much this. And yes, Pathological Goldwine is the closest thing to Carcass you can find in Goldwine to the point that they're often referred to as Carcass Tunes and a lot of them are quite fun about this. Pathological Goldwine started in the early 90s with bands like General Surgery and Necrony, but was really developed later through bands like the Matic Flag, the County Medical Examiners, Hemorrhage, and on the Impel. Warm more death metal, but completely captured that pathological feel. That's it for today, see you for the next part. Follow us! What exactly is Go Grind Part 6? Porno grind. I have to talk about this one because there's a big chance that when you hear the term gold grind, this is what comes to your mind first. Porno grind and gold grind are almost synonymous now, but they're not the same styles. And while porno grind is a direct descendant of gold grind, they're not the same thing. Mostly because of how they're getting you to that key feel of physical discomfort. Which traditional gold grind wants to make you uncomfortable to gold pen and violence, porno grind does it to a version of sex, aggression, and toilet humor. A lot more friends than bodily dismemberments, but a very different type of discourse. Musically, it translates to a style that is less aggressive and that almost does away with all the one elements from Gold Grind to focus on the groove brought on by bands like Pedigo or Dead Infection, also borrows in Pedigo's wider high pitched vocals to add a more chromatic element while still retaining the disgusting parts. Porno Grind was mostly born in Germany in the mid 90s to bands like God, Dead, Nucuperant, or CDT, but the real John Breakthrough would come in the early 2000s to bands like Monibar and mostly Romp Proud from the Netherlands, who put a huge emphasis on the groove and toilet humor that would later become the biggest staple of the style. Essentially, Porno Grind is a style that does away with almost all of the grind elements of Gold Grind to the point it becomes something that is related but ultimately completely different. And by the way, the confusion between Paul Wine and Gold has led to a lot of Gold Wine bands to reject the term Gold Wine because they do not want to be associated with the misogyny, homophobia, and transphobia that has become so prevalent in Paul Wine. And I understand because fuck that shit, seriously. See you next episode, follow us for more Gold Wine. What exactly is Gold Wine? Part 7 Gore Noise. I'm gonna be honest, this is not a subgenre I know very well. I'm not really into notes, it doesn't really do anything. But I think it's important to talk about it because after Porn and Grind, this is probably the second place your mind goes when you hear the term Go Wine. Grindcore I know has always been kind of related, as Grindcore is so minimalistic that it's almost the last step before pure noise. As early as 1997, you had bands like Soul Fruit and Fear of God already breaking the lines and making what would become known as Nose Grind. So it's logical that a Go Wine influence nose step down would emerge because there's no easier way to make you physically uncomfortable than pure nose. I don't really have a timeline for Go Noise, but you can already find traces of it on the early material of bands such as Pedigo and Blood and Bands like Gorby and Necropsy or Seven Minutes of Nausea were pretty much already doing disgusting gore like nose in the 90s. The true rise of gore noise would come in 2000, you know, like Less Days of Humanity. From in the 90s, Less Days of Humanity was then one of the ultimate gore band bands, taking a job to its extremes while still retaining a great, clear songwriting and one of the best in the study of Less Days of Humanity had two prominent influences Old School Band with Exalteration, yes, that's the one we've been living up for a decade, and Noise Run Pioneer Fear of God. And as their career progressed, they started to lean more and more on the Fear of God influence coming in. The 2006 album Putrefaction in Progress that really made Gornos as a style explode. I was there at the time and I distinctly remember a lot of bands suddenly adopting the Gornos label after this release and combined with viral videos and the rise of social media, Gornos became a staple of the Gore sound thanks to how easy it is to make compared to more traditional styles of game. Musically speaking, Corners is literally just trying to emulate the physical discomfort feel of Goldwine with pure nose. That's it, it's that easy. I don't really have more to say, again this is not a style I know very well, but it's an important staple and I mostly want to help you differentiate it 
from the more traditional style of gold grind. That's it for now, follow us for next part. What exactly is gold grind? Part 8. Let's talk about minced gore. This one might be a little controversial because minced gore is not a term that's been used a lot and it's still relatively new, but I want to talk about it because this is pretty much the whole reason PCS even exists. The term minced gore comes from minced gore, which is what the legendary band Agathocles calls their style, which is basically old school grind gore played in the style of the late 80s. And means goal is pretty much that, but for gold grind. Around the early 2010s, I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden, a lot of runes emerged that were playing gold grind, but were rejecting the bonus gold grind or drum machine based style that had become so prominent in the 2000s. And they started playing a simple, stripped down, very old school sounding style of gold grind that was a lot more reminiscent of bands like Logitate, Autophagia, or the early material of the new faction. They often made it a point to use real drums instead of drum machines, despite most of them being one man bands, and their sound was back to that passive, disgusting sound of early carcass. But in a way more minimalistic and street down style that did not go back to the early technology of the early gold mine. The most important band of that subgenre is probably Hyperemesis, whose relative success is probably responsible for the whole thing. But there are a lot of bands that you can credit for this genre. Earth, GOD, Couples Case, Metastasis, or Mineral Lucid. And on a personal note, this is where peace just went wrong. These bands brought back my passion for the one to the point I just needed to wake up something. And I'm still there a decade later. Thanks, follow us, and see you next time for the conclusion. What exactly is gold mine? Part 9 Conclusion. So, this is the last part of a series series about what is gold grind, what are its different subgenres, and how to differentiate them. If you missed a part, just go back up on our feed or go to our YouTube channel where I will post the whole thing in one video. Feel free to ask questions, discuss or correct me in the comments, I mean I'm not an authority on gold grind, I'm mostly a nerd with a music degree, but if you follow the series, I hope it has helped you understand what gold grind is and how to differentiate its different subgenres. Gold grind is a lot richer than it appears to be, it's a style that's almost 40 years old and has bent literally all over the world in a lot of different styles. And it has definitely been an influence on the rest of the music, even if you only take carcass into consideration. Thank you for following this series, PCS will come back soon with new music and new shows, and in the meantime, go listen to some gold grind.